Alright, I've got no time to explain what's going on. I've got to move. Warning. System malfunction this detected. This place is going to fall apart any Proceed second Proceed to the now. exit immediately. Gotta get out of here. Warning. System malfunction detected. Proceed to the exit immediately. Almost there. Go, 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 go. Let me out, let me out. Oh. All right, that was exciting. So that is Countdown. So in this video, obviously, we'll be discussing Countdown. Um, this is a little scene I put together using the um, Secret Bunker Booster Pack. Uh, this was a pre-built scene that came with the pack, so I decided to go ahead and use that. Um, it's It's got a lot of great assets to it, so I would encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. Um, there is a lot of stuff going on in this video, um, and all of it really was just for a little little juice, you know, a little showmanship while the countdown ticked out. Otherwise, we'd have been looking at a, a thirty second countdown for for nothing. So I can I can go through and explain some of that, but it's honestly everything that we've already talked about. You know, as far as using zones for sound and using. Um, uh, the screen shake and things like that. So if you're interested in learning about screen shake, for example, example, there's a video for that. Uh, but let's focus on countdown for now. So we have an object nearby logic linked to a zone. Um, and that's so that it'll activate. So my starting position is here. And as soon as I walk into the zone that activates the countdown. So let's take a look at countdown and see what we can do with this. So we have a maximum time parameter and that can go all the way up to 60, uh, 60 minutes. So we could have an hour countdown or we can go all the way back down. Um, and ideally we would use increments of 25. Uh, 0.25, which would be a quarter of a minute or in other words, 15 seconds, obviously, you know, um, 50.50 would be 30 seconds and so on. Um, if you notice in the beginning, I dialed this into 55 seconds or 0.55. So it was just a little bit more than 30 seconds. And it's just because I needed just a few extra seconds more. So you can dial that in and get it right, but it's hard to get a precise value uh, for that reason. It's just the way the math works. But, you know, usually 15 seconds increments of like 15, 30, 45 makes sense. Um, we have the time display on that sets so you can see the countdown clock while it's running through the scene. Um, this, the display X and display Y uh, location is just where is it going to be on the screen. Um, I left that as default and so that's the coordinates for that particular position. Um, you can change the size of the font and honestly I might have done that um but uh you know like if i was doing this for a real game i probably would make it a little bit bigger than default i left it as default for the demonstration uh, but consider this when you're making anything for somebody else to use you need to think about that person as different than yourself right so uh for instance you know some people need the larger font um, for vision purposes, or they might need a different, um, you know, uh, a different position on the screen because, it, you know, as you're play testing it and you're moving through the level, um, does it get hidden? Does it get, you know, do they miss it? Are they, is it going to be evident that there's a timer to begin with? You know, so think about those things as you're, as you're putting this together. Um, and then the end action is just what happens to the player when um, when the countdown is finished. As you saw, it it killed me, right? So I got close to the end, but there was a massive explosion and it killed me. Um, and then they, they, the game ended. Basically what it would do is it just start back over at your last save position. So it would just restart the level. Um, you can also hurt the player um, and you can also activate entities so if you're going to do that if you're going to choose activate entities 
then you would go in here and uh, you would do if used and give it a, like the name of whatever entity you want to activate at that time. Um, so maybe that's what causes the explosion. For example, if you have a, a you know a particle effect that you want to you know kick off at that moment. Um, so any any number of different things you could do with that. Let's see, let me go back to the behavior. And then lastly, there's a sound. Um, you could run a sound for uh, when it hits the countdown, it would do a sound. So maybe that's a, you know, ta-da, you win or something like that. There's, you know, different variations of uh, uses for that. And that's what kind of makes it so flexible. In this case, what I wanted was a, a way to get through a level and ultimately fail. <laughs> I, was, I was planning on dying uh, at the end. Was, there's no way to make it with the, the time that I gave it. Um, so this was a really short video, <clears throat> I know. And so uh, I want to cover a couple other things just as a, let's call it a bonus. Um, because as I was setting this up, you can see I've got a lot going on in the scene that have nothing to do with the countdown. It's really just, you know, trigger zones that are, you know, activating pipe bursts down below, you know, down the, the row. Or I've got this, which is playing an explosion sound. Um, I think the screen shake, I just picked nearby objects and, you know, and add that. So this is logic linked to that so that it'll uh, do the screen shake. And again, we've talked about screen shake before, so I won't get into that. Just go watch that other video if you're interested. Um, down through here, this is what I kind of wanted to show you though. So we get in here and we have a trigger zone that not only does it play a sound, which is actually pretty faint, uh, but it also is triggered to an object. So this object up here is just kind of floating there. It's not really attached to anything. Um, and it is not active at the beginning of the scene. It has no behavior. It's just an, a physical object affected by gravity um, and is not visible at start. So what activates it, what makes it, you know, in the scene is by running through that trigger. And then what I did was I had to time it just right. So this zone is its whole purpose is to play the metal uh, sound that you hear and i had to dial this in such that by the time it hit the floor that's when i was going through this zone activating the sound so um, i wanted to point that out just because as you know as i was putting this together i realized that you know there's a lot more to it than just a single behavior oftentimes when you're putting these things together there's multiple things happening at one time a lot of it's just planning that out and uh, providing you know the the right level of timing um, and sequence in order to get that done um, and then the only other thing i wanted to do just because i don't have a way to credit it exactly was this voice so uh, when we went through and you heard the female voice saying you know warning there's a malfunction um, the way i did that was i opened up one note and in one note in fact let me let me show you in one note if you have it uh, close that um, here you can see the message that i wrote right warning system malfunction detected proceed, uh, proceed to exit immediately and if you click on view, there's immersive reader. So click on that and that opens the immersive reader and you can just play it. Warning, system malfunction detected. Okay, um, and there's different, there's the male and female out with the female voice. You can change the speed. And then uh, once you have that, uh, what I did was I just recorded it using the same software I'm recording with now. Um, and then took that uh, audio and you know just massaged it a little bit to to get to turn it into a wave file. So from there, I was able to just create the audio file for myself. So just in case you were wondering where that came from, I didn't have a proper way to to cite it, so I wanted to at least mention it. Um, but that is everything that there is to cover in this video. Um, if you enjoyed the video and if you learned something new, please be sure to click the, the like button down below. If you're new here or if you haven't yet already subscribed, now's a great time to do so. Uh, while you're down there clicking the like button, you can just click the little red subscribe button as well. Uh, and if you'd like a notification for when I post new videos, I do keep an irregular schedule right now. It's just whenever I have something ready, I post it. Um, so if you want a notification, bell icon's your friend for that. 
Uh, but that's it. Thanks so much for your time, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.